What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Loud and Proud YouTube channel. I've tried to keep a couple things here and there going up on the LMP gear page. So hopefully guys have been able to keep up with that if you're somebody who's really interested in the LMP gear brand and the giveaways specifically and maybe exclusively. But we're back here with the 0759 today. I had a few things on the list that we were going to try to do to the truck. Some of those things we are able to do and some of those things we were not able to do due to multiple different reasons. But however, we are gonna work on something today that, so the gauges on the truck just decided to stop working. And I thought maybe it was just an electrical issue, like, you know, maybe maybe a wire came loose, a ground wire for the gauges. Nope, not a ground wire issue. Um, the gauges are just not working. The boost gauge works because it's manual. It's an actual boost line that goes from the intake to the actual gauge, so it's all manual, but none of the lights work on it in the upper to the exhaust temp and the transmission temp. Those are not working at all. I don't know if the gauges just went haywire and just stopped working or what, but we did get some new gauges in for the truck, so I'm gonna try to hook those up today. But we are gonna try to get these new gauges here installed. It should be pretty easy because the manifold's already tapped for the exhaust temp gauge. Let's get to it and see if we can get these gauges hooked up. I'm not sure if for the boost pressure gauge, if I'm gonna have to redo all that or not, or if a lot of the wiring I'm gonna be able to reuse or not reuse, I'm not sure, because those are auto meter gauges, and the gauges that I'm putting in it are glow shift gauges. Those are the ones that I could get in the soonest to be able to get in the truck, so not real sure. I just wanna make sure that this thing has gauges on it, because I don't like running trucks with a lot of performance stuff done without gauges, because not being able to monitor things is never a good thing when everything is aftermarket. For those of you that have watched the channel for any length of time, I have never put manual gauges like this on a third gen. I've had a digital display on a third gen before. Actually, I take it on two different third gens. I've had digital displays. I've never actually done gauges on one of these myself. So I'm gonna get to taking these off, disconnecting them, tracing the wiring back down through and where they hook up, you know, between the exhaust temp and the trans temp and make sure everything's good and just kind of go from there and kind of reverse engineer it and then place the gauges as necessary. So here we are about two and a half hours later. It took a little while, even though it should have been an easier process. Guys, this is what I'm working with right now. Okay, I've got chickens running around, crapping all over the ground. I got a, got a freaking cat under the truck. You guys have no idea how excited I am to finally have my own shop that's complete with a lift, drainage. Everything that I need to fully function and comfortably do what I like doing any day of the week, any time of year, in comfort, and just being able to do it and enjoy the entire process, like whether it's too hot or too cold or whatever, it will be okay and it will be comfortable. There's still gonna be challenges with the projects, but at least I can be facing challenges in more comfort, in a more ideal situation, which has been a goal for a long time. So let's get into what we got done. So I never really did figure out why the gauges weren't working, but I did get them all rewired. Everything's done. They're new gauges, new lines, new everything. Here is the exhaust temp gauge. And for whatever reason, the old one was mounted in the proper location, but on the underside of the manifold, I don't know if they did that to try to make it look more clean. Um, to hide it, but that's where that's mounted. That's that. Just went right in there, all good. Trans temp gauge goes down there, of course, in the transmission on the side, on the passenger side is where I put it in. On the boost pressure, boost pressure is actually, that fitting to read that is located right there. That is all mechanical as well. It actually pushes the boost pressure all the way through into the gauge itself. So that's everything under the hood. EGT line your EGT gauge um, and the line is ran down through there. 
comes up, everything zip tied nice and neat along the firewall, as neat as I could get it. Man, this thing is just so stinking clean with our LNP Maximum Shield ceramic coating. So let's actually start this thing up here. Heck yeah. Let's see how this stuff starts to go. There's the exhaust temps climbing right there. The boost gauge, whatever, I've had this issue with glow shift gauges in the past. I don't know why they do that, but like there's the zero line, which is down there. Let me zoom in here. There's the zero line right down there, right? But it's, get it to focus, but it always stays on the first hash above that. And I don't know if I've just been unlucky with a couple sets of glow shift gauges to where the needle sits one hash above zero or not. It always reads totally fine and the boost pressure, you know, it does its thing once you actually build some pressure. But I've always had that issue for whatever reason and it's never affected anything performance wise other than, you know, when you're at idle, it looks like you have one or two pounds of boost, which isn't accurate, of course, if you're not building any boost. Um, EGT's reading pretty accurate. That's probably a pretty good accurate reading currently at idle, which is about, mm, I don't know, 300 degrees, give or take. And then transcept, of course, that's probably accurate because, well, the truck hasn't been running for five or six hours and it's getting pretty freaking cold out. So it's probably pretty cold. I did have some fluid run on my fingers when I was putting in the um, transmission temp probe there to read the transmission fluid temps and it was not warm at all it was, it was cold so um, that's probably pretty accurate for it just being fired up about one minute ago and I do have the set to where when you flip on your daytime lights or headlights it does dim them down automatically um, kind of helps become a little easier on the eyes just makes it a little more functional a little easier to drive at night gauges are in the truck next day here we're actually gonna be headed over to my dad and we're gonna be hanging out with him for a little bit but let's get on over there we're gonna move on to the next part of this video however do not forget that 30 times entries are back for the last few days of this giveaway for this 2007 59 Cummins plus the five thousand dollars in cash if you want to get entered to win this thing and get those 30 times entries lnpgear.com you can buy anything on the store windbreaker like this hoodie like the one i've got on a hat like this anything on the store gets you entered to win this thing and right now 30 times entries are in which means for every one dollar you spend you get 30 entries instead of the normal entry so grab those entries while you can get entered to win this thing because somebody has to take it home could be you giveaway ends next week though so when we head over there we're actually going to take the old we've been calling this trip white noise Seems like a seems like a good name for it. I'm actually gonna drive this today. It's kind of a nasty, wet, rainy day anyway. And I just fully detailed <laughs> the third gen, so I'd rather not take it all over these nasty roads and flick, you know, a bunch of road dirt and debris all over the side of it. Well, we're in the King Ranch here. My dad and I just stopped by to look at some deer hunting blinds actually over here. And it is called Graber Lumber here, and I think it's in Grable, Indiana. And they've got some pretty freaking sweet blinds here. We were gonna actually build some of our own, and we still might do that to an extent, but he's like, I've got some people that say that they sell these blinds and they're freaking sweet, and they're ready to go. They're like everything that we would want in a blind. I mean, I'm talking like, they've got solar panels mounted on the roof that are like seamlessly fitted into the roofing, so you can't see them sticking up at all. They've got charging ports in there and outlets and LED lighting strips around the top so when you open the door, it senses the door opening and turns on LEDs, which is pretty sick. And then as soon as the doors close, it turns them off. But you can manually switch them to keep them on if you want. Tinted windows, sliding, quiet, insulated, soundproof, freaking sweet blinds. They're super sick. They're not overly priced though, compared to like the redneck blinds and stuff like that. So I think he's actually gonna put one or two of these on order because they're pretty freaking sick. Let me show you. So there's one right there. There's a demo. It's a five foot by six foot front platform, 10 foot in the air, I believe, 10 or 15 feet, but I think it's 10. Absolutely sick. Like I said, you can't see that solar panel on the roof. There's the ventilation at the top, but you cannot see a solar panel on the roof because it's seamlessly built into the roof so, it's so, so it sits flush. And it's aluminum siding 
and it's all weatherproofed and sealed off. So it's pretty freaking, it's pretty sick. I didn't actually get a lot of video with my dad. We were kind of running short on time. We were gonna go and do a couple more things and I was looking at the clock and I'm like, shoot, I've actually gotta go because we are selling both of the properties that Reagan and I bought in 2020. We're actually selling them both right now. Today we got a sign in about an hour. Kind of a bittersweet, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like I like the concept of, you know, seeing all this money deposit into my account but I'm really actually kind of like not super excited about selling the properties in a certain sense, in the sense of like I love hunting and I love having options of places to go hunt and enjoy. And it's, I'm trying to get it into my head that we're gonna have a great hunting property where we're moving to in our backyard, which will be an even better situation. But in my mind, it's kind of like, ah, oh, I'm letting go of such a good piece of hunting property. And like, I don't know why it's bothering me because as a kid, it was always a dream of mine to own my own hunting ground. And I was like, by the age of 20, I want to own my own hunting property. And I, and I bought two by the age of 20 and our house. And, but it's just tearing me up, even though like, I know I'm gonna have another hunting property that's really good as well. I've just, it's hard to match the quality of hunting that I had on these properties and actually believe that it can be that good somewhere else. And I don't know if the property that we're getting is gonna be just as good or better because the properties that I'm selling, I mean, especially the Ohio one, I mean, that place was absolutely wild for deer hunting. Like seeing 20 to 40 deer a sip was pretty normal. At this other place, the guy said he shoots it from his back sliding door. So, I mean, and he showed me a lot of pictures of deer that they have on camera and some of the bucks he shot from the back door. He's like, dude, there's so many deer out here. And I'm like, I want to believe you that it's that good. You just never know until you have your own first one or two seasons on the property. But regardless, it's happening. We're selling them both. And uh, I'll let you guys know how I feel after the closing is done. I don't know if like my, my mood is gonna change after closing, but building up to it right now, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, a little bit torn on it, honestly. I really am. I was telling my dad, I'm like, I don't know why I'm like kind of torn about selling the properties now. I'm like, I know that I'm gonna financially gain from it quite a bit. We're gonna turn that money into other investment assets in terms of like real estate rental property, but it's like, I really like those properties, you know, but I'm just, I'm just not gonna get a lot of use out of them once we move because they're gonna be, you know, three hours away from me. So, I don't know. It's a toss up, but it'll all be good in the end. Oh, guys. The properties are gone. We did just close on both of them. Super excited for the guys though that bought them because it's uh, it's been a lot of fun having those properties, being able to go hunt, especially that Ohio property with the sheer numbers is just absolutely unreal. And uh, hopefully they enjoy it. If you guys see this, definitely keep me posted. I already told you that in person, but uh, definitely keep me posted on how you guys have success on the properties and keep me updated with what you guys do with it and uh, the deer you guys get, because I'm pretty excited to see your guys' results because we did a lot of improvements to the bedding areas and stuff like that. And we didn't have a lot of time to actually really get to reap the benefits from all that stuff. So you guys are gonna be getting it while it gets good and uh, super excited for you guys and super excited to move on to the next step here, which is gonna be moving. And then once we get moved and we're settled, we're gonna be starting to do some other types of investing over in that location. So pretty pumped about that. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching the video. A little bit different, kind of broken up. A lot of different little pieces. You know, we put gauges in the third gen. Went to hang out with my dad for a little bit, looking at some hunting blinds. I went and closed on the properties. We had a good time, I think. So if you guys wanna see anything in particular with the videos here, let me know. This is the vlog channel, so I'm just posting like anything that I really wanna post on this channel. And anything that's just like strictly about a giveaway truck or a giveaway truck update or products, it's gonna be on the LMP Gear YouTube channel, which that link will also be in the description below if you guys wanna keep up with strictly LMP brand and giveaway branding stuff. Uh, other than that guys, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys wanna get entered to win that 2007 5.9 Cummins plus $5,000 cash, 
30 times entries are live right now. So for every $1 you spend, you're gonna get 30 entries right now versus the standard entry. So take advantage of that while you can. It's our highest entry multiplier and it is the last few days to get entered to win. If you haven't done so yet, there's no better time to get in. You might as well get in now um, or forever hold your peace. Somebody's gotta take that truck home though and that somebody could be you. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.